divided country. Welcome judges, fellow contestants, parents, and guests. My name is Leilani Cordova from Montalama Elementary in Ms. Segura's sixth grade class. To survive in peace and harmony, united and strong, we must be one people, one nation, one flag. That was a popular quote by Pauline Hansen, who is currently senator, representing Queensland in the Parliament of Australia. Now, 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 I know she may not be American, but this is not how her words apply to us as a country. It should be some sort of wake-up call, saying to put our differences aside and stand together. Living in a free country, we will always have different opinions and beliefs. Every day in the news, you hear about racism and hate and all that's bad in the world. What if we focused on the good? What if we approached our problems with love and empathy instead of envy and hatred? Could that help us become one people, like Pauline described in her quote? Putting yourself in someone else's shoes may help you see things differently, see things through that person's eyes. The next time you have an opposing viewpoint from someone, try to imagine yourself in their position. That homeless man you drive by every day on your way home from school or work, asking for help. Instead of assuming the worst, maybe you can stop and learn his story. A simple conversation could potentially make a person feel wanted or maybe even change their lives for the better. Volunteering at homeless shelters might help you understand the details of these people's struggles. This may change your mind on how you see the poor and needy members of your community and could potentially make you want to help. So, before you judge on appearance or behaviors, think about what might be going on in their own home. These minor gestures may not change the world but they might make us more understanding of each other's differences. As the old saying goes, united we stand, divided we fall. When you go home, think about what you can do to be more understanding of other people's differences. Thank you for your time and I hope you like my speech. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it important to say the Pledge of Allegiance? Or do you just roll with it? Do you know why we say the Pledge of Allegiance? Good morning, judges, parents, and my fellow contestants. My name is Roy Benya, and I am here to tell you why it is important to say the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is a way for us to say thank you to those who put their lives at risk to save our country. There are many other reasons why we should say the Pledge of Allegiance, like to honor our nation and to make a promise that we need to be true to our nation. First of all, members in the military put their lives at risk, and most of them died trying to save us. My grandpa was in the Vietnam War. He put America first. Every day, when my brother, my sister, and I go to school, we make sure we do the Pledge of Allegiance in honor of my grandpa and my cousin and those who have served and who are currently serving. Did you know that throughout all of the wars, over one million people have passed? Also, members in the military love their country so much that they are willing to take time away from their family. Sometimes they are separated and miss their kids or other family members. Also, we should do the Pledge of Allegiance to honor and respect our country. America is such a strong country that we need to do everything we can to help keep it strong. A little part of the pledge is one nation. One nation means that we are a single nation that is free to make our own choices. One of my favorite quotes is from Barack Obama. It is, I see Americans of every party, every background, every faith, who believe we are stronger together. Black, white, Latino, Asian, Native American, young, old, gay, straight, folks with disabilities, all pledging allegiance under the same proud flag to the big to this big, bold country that we love. That's what I see, that's the America I know. And I agree with him. However, to make our own choices, we need to play a role. And we do. We play a role as citizens in this nation. Lastly, we need to be true to our country. Our country provides so much for us that we all should be so grateful for it. In this case, we need to say thank you for a beautiful, wonderful country. You are probably wondering, is there, is there a way to say thank you? Well, there is, and that is the Pledge of Allegiance. 
Believe it or not, the Pledge of Allegiance is way more than just a pledge. It is an oath and promise that we need to be true and will not hurt our nation. So my dear friends, I strongly believe it is important to say the Pledge of Allegiance every morning. Even though we can't actually fight, we can at least say the Pledge of Allegiance. We really need to step up our game and do what's right for our country. Thank you for your time. Greetings, parents, judges, and others. We're gathered here to feel patriotic. Allow me to do my part to make us feel patriotic. My purpose is that it is our duty to know and love our country. I'm gonna do it with a quote. Although, if you don't know, patriotism is your country's national loyalty. People who love one's country. Now let's begin. This is the quote I will be using. Let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us not seek to fix the blame of the past, but accept responsibility for the future. This quote from John F. Kennedy stirs up patriotism for a number of reasons. This quote says to find the right answer. The U.S. stands on this belief, the right answer. It was the right answer to secede from the British crown. According to the show, Liberty's Kids, we were being oppressed by having to pay the tea tax, the sugar tax, and a whole lot of other unlawful taxes. But we made the right decision. We fought for our freedom. We may have had to go to war, but when we do, it is for the protection for the people of the world. An example, Hitler and Mussolini murdered millions during World War II, but the US and its allies came in and defeated them, saving millions of lives. Now, you may be thinking, what is the right answer? It's something that helps the people. An example, Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal created jobs for millions of Americans during the Great Depression, a time when many were jobless. We are responsible for the future, but since we make great decisions, it'll be a great future. You don't know how much I wanna scream out praise for the US because of the fact that we stand on the beliefs of democracy, like voting. We fight evil people like Hitler and Mussolini. But most importantly, we have the freedom to decide who we are. If today I made you feel patriotic, raise the flag, help a veteran, or just say thank you to the people that serve or served you. America, red, white, and blue, representing freedom around the world. Thank you all of you for your time. Who defends our country? Who protects our country? Who risks their lives for us every single day? Well, I'll tell you. Good morning, parents, judges, and fellow contestants. Today, I'll be telling you why I am proud to be an American. I am proud to be an American because of our army. An army is a branch of nation's armed forces that follows the military around. Our army has about 500,000 on active duty and about 550,000 in the Reserve and National Guard. A National Guard is one of the organizations of the United States Army and Air Force. They are, tried to, they are trained to fight on the land and they are, always on, they are always on duty. Every Army has plans and ideas to determine what they are going to do in their battle. They need lots of weapons, helicopters, tanks, and even more stuff. They protect our good country by fighting other people and security duty. So now, a reason why I am proud to be an American is because if it wasn't for our brave army and military forces, 
we would not be in the USA, and the USA is the best because we have rights. Like, we can vote for anyone we want, or we can be anything we put our mind to, any opportunity. And in some countries, well, they don't do that. So that's one reason why I'm proud. Another reason why I am proud to be an American, because we have freedom. Our army risk, our li risk their lives for us every day for us to have freedom, and freedom makes America great. It takes a lot of courage to be in the army or in any force in the military, because you're willing to maybe even sacrifice yourself over 300 million people in the USA for them to have a peaceful and great country. There is more to be an American, but these ideas are very important. So now you know who the Army is, what they do, and now you even know who defends and protects our country. I appreciate you for being here today and listening to what I had to say. So thank you. Oh, wait, this one. Oh, and one more thing. Are you willing to be in the Army or in any force in the military? If you are, then thank you for your service and good luck. Right. What are the important responsibilities we, the United States citizens, have in our society today? Good afternoon, judges, fellow contestants, and special guests. My name is Jocelyn Castillo, and today I'm here to apprise and explain our most important responsibilities as United States citizens. From my point of view, I believe the most critical responsibilities we all shall fall under are paying taxes, the importance of obeying the laws, and lastly, why we shall respect the rights, beliefs, and opinions of others. To begin with, paying taxes is one imperative responsibility for all adults to tackle on. But for what reason? Now, think of this. Where does our tax money go? Taxes are stationed into different divisions of the economic sector. In contrast to paying the salaries of government workers, your taxes also help to support common resources such as police and firefighters. Also, taxes help to secure roads you travel on, ensuring they are safe and kept well maintained. Don't forget, taxes are the basic structure that help fund our public education. That education helps the mass majority of students become the change in our generation needed. In addition, obeying federal, state, and local laws are primarily important to the United States citizens to ensure equality for all. Therefore, following laws is very predominant owing to the fact that laws were set for us Americans to respect. Without these uncompromising boundaries, the safety of our environment would be fairly treacherous. According to the judicial branch representatives, laws act like a guideline as to what is accepted in our society today. By having a structural guideline on the rights and constitutional laws can help bring our nation as a whole. Additionally, respecting the rights, beliefs, and opinions of, uh, of others is also very crucial. The idea of peace is that you listen to others, have respect, and hear them out. We the people must also not despise other citizens' beliefs. We are the individuals who help bring the United States the true meaning of equality. In the final analysis, the importance of, of, respect, uh, the importance of responsibility all begins with paying taxes, the importance of obeying the laws, and lastly, why we, and lastly respecting the, the rights, beliefs, and opinions of others. What do you think our important, our important responsibilities are? Thank you. Welcome, judges, fellow contestants, and guests. 
I am Andrew Trailer Rowan. What can a 12 year old do to make a difference? What a 12 year old can do to make a difference is volunteer at animal shelter, serve meals at the homeless, and do stand up for what's right. No bullying. By making the world a better place, you make the, your community better for tomorrow. When you are 12, you can volunteer at an animal shelter. There are varieties of tasks assigned to volunteers. You may walk dogs, socialize with cats, help with feeding, watering, and grooming. And for Katie, pet food my, made by pet people. Helping out a fellow animal shelter makes a better tomorrow. There are fellow Americans that don't have homes or money for food. There are many homeless people that 12 year olds can help. They can volunteer at a soup, soup kitchen. On one single night in January 2018, the number of men, women, and children experiencing homelessness was 564,000. Those could fill nearly eight NFL stadiums, stated Mark P. Fisher. Most of kids that are bullied don't report it. Bullying is a big problem. The definition of bullying is to seek harm, intimidate, or coerce someone per persevered as valuable. I myself has been bullied. I regret not telling someone that I was bullied. 12 year olds can, be, can report being bullied or others who have been or are still being bullied. I'd rather be a little nobody than be an evil somebody. Abraham Lincoln. You can be bullied for anything. They can bully you because hair, race, smarts, even your body. There is no such thing as the perfect body besides your own. 12 year olds can do amazing things. They can help with animals. They can sell, serve meals to the homeless. Bullying is a giant problem, but 12 year olds can make a small difference. Thank you for your time, judges, parents, and contestants. Patriotism, what does that mean? To me and my family is a community, a nation, coming together as one to support each other. It's giving respect to an officer that was recently killed in the line of duty. It's helping a family who's recently lost their home to flooding or fire. As a few of you may know, my family loves to run. On September 9th of last year, we were at our first cross country meet of the year. There was excitement in the air, but that all changed when Mom got a phone call from my Aunt Tracy asking if Aubrey, my cousin, had contacted her. We later found out that Aubrey was missing. Her bedroom was empty and her front window was kicked out. Later that same day, we found out Aubrey had been kidnapped. This man targeted Aubrey because she was young, innocent, and pretty. Sunday morning, an Amber Alert was issued for Aubrey. We were scared. We didn't know if Aubrey was alive or if we ever see her again. Sunday morning, I mean Sunday afternoon around 4.30 p.m., Aubrey was found safe. Assistant at the gas station saw them and contacted the police. When the police came, the man resisted the vest, but the citizen tackled the man. Patriotism, to me, means helping others in need. The local police department and FBI worked tirelessly to find Aubrey. The media put Aubrey on the news to help get her face out there. Her high school all were yelling in support of finding Aubrey. This is what being a patriot is a community coming together as one to support each other. We have been on 11 all those firefighters, police officers, and volunteers. At the Pentagon, the reason it didn't do more damage is because the people on the plane retook the plane from the hijackers. The same thing with the one we think was heading towards the White House. These are acts of patriotism, but sadly, 2,977, not counting the hijackers, died. More than 6,000 people were injured. 
I know some of you think you can't be patriotic, but you can. <coughs> if you don't believe me, here are some ways. Loving your country, supporting other people in need, and joining the military. These are only a few ways. There are many more. Now, I define patriotism in some ways I know people were patriotic. I also told you some ways you could be patriotic. Now, I challenge all of you to be the most patriotic person you can be. Just try your best. Thank you for listening to my, your, my speech and have a good rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Webster's Dictionary defines the word virtue as having particular moral excellence. The 35th President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, once said, Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Good afternoon, judges, guests, and my fellow contestants. My name is Fawaz Ali, and I'm a sixth grader at Peoria Elementary. Patriotism. It means more than doing the Pledge of Allegiance or loving your country. When my family immigrated from Kenya to the United States, they entered a melting pot of different religions, races, cultures, people, and languages. These are the qualities that made this country what it is today. Being an American citizen is being loyal to your country. I'm proud to be American of the land of the free and home to the brave and bold. America is one nation. One symbol, one flag. True patriotism is being united as one. A patriot is someone who believes in liberty and justice for all. The strongest weapon in America is a patriotic individual. Patriotism, an unbeatable determination that makes the very best of this nation. An American citizen would hate injustice, but believe in our freedom. We are one nation under God, but America is not just a nation. America is the land of the free, where our flag is a symbol of pride. Some examples of patriotism are someone who would help the poor, someone who cares about the environment, someone who would shop at a small business, and an individual who who is nice and honest. To me, patriotism means one's love for the country. Being a patriot means more than being a good citizen. Being a patriot means to stand by this country, to pledge for the flag, to make his or her sacrifice for our freedom, to salute the people who are fighting for our freedom, and to wear our colors red, white, and blue. Patriotism, it unites us as one, it's hope for our nation. It's freedom in our nation. America is built on patriotism. John F. Kennedy once said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Ladies and gentlemen, what makes you a patriot? Thank you. You go to school every day and say the Pledge of Allegiance. But why? Good afternoon, my name is Abby Harris and I am here to present the significance of the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance should be said every day because it's an oath of loyalty to our country. Not only that, but it is a symbol of our country's freedom. And furthermore, it is so as to say we are all equal. Is that not what we want in our country? The Pledge of Allegiance was written by Francis Bellamy in August of 1892. The Pledge of Allegiance was later published in the Boston Youth Magazine on September 8, 1892. That was just the beginning. Now it is said by kids around the country every day. It takes a mere 15 seconds to recite our pledge. The pledge is also used at all government meetings. Unfortunately, most people don't actually know what our pledge means. Our pledge means, I promise to be true to the symbol of our country. All people, religion or not, our country can't be split. And each state that has joined it, when, before we get our choice of leaders, all people, the symbol of our country, with all freedom and fairness for public and to be true. True to not only those who fought for our country, but those who are still fighting today. Most people think school teachers should tell us what the pledge means so we as kids know what we're saying. The Pledge of Allegiance has been altered many times, the last edition being under God in 1954. 
Some people think it is rude to atheists or those who do not believe in a higher force. Some people even want to get rid of the pledge. Some respected things to do are put your hand over your heart, stand, face the flag, do not really alter the pledge, and take off all hats, of course. You're not required to say the Pledge of Allegiance, especially if you're native to another country, but it's very highly encouraged if you're an American citizen and always have been. In conclusion, despite the arguments that the Pledge of Allegiance is significant or it is not, it is up to you as an American citizen. There are indeed many ways it is significant and indeed many ways it is not. I, I truly do believe there is a point, a gist, a theme, and even a significance. I would like to leave you with these words from William Tyler Page. I believe in the United States of America as a government of the people, by the people, for the people, whose just powers are derived from the consent of the governed, a democracy within a republic, a sovereign nation of many sovereign states, one and inseparable, established upon those principles of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity for which American patriots sacrifice their lives and fortunes. I therefore believe it is my duty to my country to support its constitution, obey its laws, and respect its flag. Thank you for your time. Welcome judges, fellow contestants, parents, and guests. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my speech. Enjoy. Patriot, someone who supports their country unconditionally someone who is prepared to defend and assist their country in any way, shape, or form. A patriot is someone who will strive for their country. They will speak, they will appreciate, they will think, and they will know. A patriot will stand up for what they believe in and fight for what is truly right. Ron Paul once said, real patriotism is a willingness to challenge the government when it's wrong. A real patriot wants the best for their country. In order to get what you want, you need to speak. So a patriot won't hesitate to show you right from wrong, no matter who you are. A patriot has many tasks, such as appreciating what they have and how far this country has come. This country has allowed us to, do, to dream big and, do, and achieve great things. So you would see a patriot appreciating the opportunities and blessings we have today. A patriot will value those who fought for our country's freedom and rights. A patriot would realize all the opportunities we have and appreciate what they have and who fought for where we are today. Patriots aren't reluctant to participate in various patriotic activities whether it be sending a car to a soldier, attending elections and or voting, going to famous monuments and learning more about them, even volunteer work or paying your taxes are all acts of patriotism, anything you could possibly do to show patriotism. As a patriot, you will care for your country so much that you wouldn't waste a second. You take the time just to show a little support for your nation. Another thing a true patriot has to do is think. There are many things to think about. For example, let's say you're listening to a speech for someone wanting to become president. You have to think, would this person be a good choice? Will the things this person is saying help our country? How will the things this person is saying affect our country? You have to think carefully. A vote is like a rifle. Its usefulness depends upon the character of its user. Theodore Roosevelt said that. It means a vote is a very powerful thing. It can do anything must be chosen extremely carefully because it can either go into the wrong hands or the right hands. It depends on you. As you can see, a patriot will undertake many duties to show their appreciation for their country and expose their love for their country by doing what is truly right, by showing real patriotism. Thank you. True patriotism isn't cheap. It's about taking on a fair share of the burden of keeping America going, as quoted by Robert Reich. This quote goes to show that any person, regardless of age, gender, or profession, can be an American patriot. Hello and good afternoon, guests, judges, and fellow contestants. My name is Savannah, and I would like to thank you for being here. There have been countless events in American history that define true patriotism. However, I would like to focus on three distinct occurrences that have truly made a mark in our country's history starting with the signing of the Declaration of Independence and ending with the Yarnell Hill Fire. To begin, on July 4, 1776, 
our Declaration of Independence was signed. When Thomas Jefferson wrote and signed the Declaration, he knew that he and 55 other men could be accused of treason just for doing what they believed was right. Would you as a person be willing to sign a piece of paper for the betterment of your country, knowing you could just as well be signing your own death certificate? Equally important, I would like to discuss a phenomenal man who saved the lives of many innocent people. Todd Beamer was flying on United Flight 93 when four men took full control over the airplane. The hijackers were armed and stated that they had bombs. Beamer and several other passengers decided they were going to take control over the plane before the hijackers could crash it into the White House. All passengers gathered in the back where they found any item to subdue hijackers. Thankfully, they were able to storm the cockpit and prevent the plane from hitting its target. Flight 93 crashed into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, killing everyone on board. On September 11, 2001, many lives were saved by the heroic actions of Todd Beamer and other passengers. How do you think you would have reacted if you or someone you loved were on that flight? Last, but certainly not least, on the 28th day of June in 2013, lightning ignited a fire on a hill in Yarnell, Arizona. This wildfire spread quickly towards Prescott. Many brave firefighters responded to this fire. However, on June 30th, 19 firemen were overcome while they heroically attempted to put it out. Could you imagine rushing into a fire while others were fleeing it? This was the greatest loss of firemen since the 1993 Griffith Park fire. Though this was such a tragedy, in honor of the Grand Am Mountain hotshots, a memorial trail was created to show people where these heroes took their last stand for their country. Let's remember this quote. True patriotism isn't cheap. It's about taking on a fair share of the burden of keeping America going. How do you think we as ordinary people can take on some of that burden of keeping America going? Today we discussed the events and patriots of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the Arnell Hill Fire, and Todd Beamer. With these events, we can be sure to appreciate all patriots because they took on a burden of keeping their country going. These were ordinary people like you and me who stepped up and made a difference. Can you? Thank you for your time. Welcome judges, guests, and fellow contestants. My name is Yaelene Zapetta. George Bush Sr. once said, I do not like broccoli. I have it since I was a little kid. My mother made me eat it, but I'm president of the United States now, and I'm not gonna eat any more broccoli. Being American means we don't have to eat broccoli if we don't want to. Whew. This makes me feel proud to be an American because we have freedom of choice, we stand united, and can be proud to be a part of this great country. Freedom is a big part of America. We have opportunities for many rights. Our rights are important in America because past presidents and political figures have worked to put these rights into place. So we should all be thankful and appreciative of our rights. One of our main prerogatives are freedom of religion and freedom of speech. Citizenship helps America and ensures America remains a free nation. Being united in America is very important. Americans are very united so they can display the perfect union the Founding Fathers had up to create. Unity makes our country more fair, more equal, and more inclusive to all. When you ask for help in times of need, people come together to be a team. Freedom makes us show how proud we are to live in the United States. Americans do a great job showing pride for their country. A major event we show pride for is Independence Day. We also show pride by hanging the American flag in many buildings. We show respect to it. The American flag is important because the 13 colonies are seen in the 13 stripes, and the 50 stars represent the 50 states. Showing pride for America represents everything we work for and respect. I am proud to be an American because we have freedom, unity, and pride. Freedom gave us rights. Unity helps us be together, and for pride, we show respect. For all these reasons, I'm thankful, and I think we should all be glad our nation allows us to skip the broccoli. Thank you. Hello, judges, spectators, and fellow competitors. My name is Seth Booker, and I love history. And of the many history books I've read, one of the most significant of events in American history was the signing of the Declaration of Independence. I am here to tell you about the event and how it instills patriotism in me today. 
Back before we were yet a country, and the colonists were fighting against the unfair British rule, the Second Continental Congress met in Philadelphia in 1776 after the American Revolution began. The delegates of Congress were arguing over independence. One of the delegates from Massachusetts, the legendary patriot Sam Adams said, are we not already independent? Why not declare it? Future presidents John Adams and Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter declaring freedom from the cruel British taxes. The declaration was presented on July 2nd and signed on July 4th, 1776, and a new nation was born. John Adams said that he could see, through the gloom, rays of light and glory. The signing of the Declaration of Independence began the fight for the liberty of our country. There are three reasons the Declaration of Independence instills patriotism in me today. First, it is evidence of how much we value liberty and freedom. Patriot General the Marquis de Lafayette called liberty the most sacred of the rights and indispensable of duties. Freedom is both a gift and responsibility. Secondly, the Declaration separated us from England, which was the start of a young democracy full of hopes and dreams that would soon grow into a powerful nation. Lastly, its words inspire us to take a stand for America and be patriotic. Let us support our country during both the ups and the downs. If the Declaration of Independence hadn't been written, we wouldn't have a country to be proud of. It isn't just an antique document and museum, but the foundation of the freedoms we enjoy today. As famous abolitionist Frederick Douglass said of the Declaration of Independence in 1852, the principles contained in that instrument are saving principles. Stand by those principles and be true to them during all occasions, at all places, against all foes, and at whatever cost. Thank you for your time and attention. The great historian Daniel J. Borston once said, freedom means the opportunity to be what we never thought we would be. Borston, in my opinion, spoke to the very essence of what it means to be an American to have the opportunity to dream bigger dreams and to reach for the stars even when we were only shooting for the clouds. Beyond those clouds sparks fireworks of honor, independence, and liberty. I am proud to be an American because we have freedom. Hello judges, fellow contestants, and audience members. My name is Giovanni James. Freedom is given to us because courageous men and women fearlessly risk their lives in the greatest military in the world. Not only does our military have the most money invested, but has brave moms and dads who are missing at the dinner table across this fine country. They sacrifice witnessing their child's first steps or even scoring their first point in a basketball game. We have sons and daughters who are exchanging high school diplomas for tickets to basic training. So the next time you stand to honor our country and sing the song written by Francis Scott Key, Land of the Free and Home of the Brave, please remember these soldiers who made freedom possible and made way to build a great government. Our government is another reason why we have freedom. Our government has created programs to help people in need. The government can make changes, but ultimately, the power is in the hands of the people. This falls in line with what Abraham Lincoln said, for the people, by the people. The government is also in control of the Department of Education. Nelson Mandela said education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Kids in less fortunate countries won't have the opportunity to go to school. Instead, they will be forced to work in less than desirable places in order for their families to eat. Teachers give wisdom to their students so they can develop their learning and social skills. So when you see the U.S. flag, you should remember that we are protected by a powerful military, structured by a great government, and given an amazing education. Given us freedom to roam, freedom to control, and freedom to grow. 
all reasons why I am proud to be an American. Thank you.